So this is the end for the F-35. So welcome to a new video. I am very sorry for the production value of this video, but I am in the middle of a relocation. I am in the middle of a pandemic. I am in the middle of a, a pretty much painful strain on my back, but I thought this definitely deserved to be covered. So I'm giving precedence to this subject, even though the quality of audio and filming is yes what it is. I'm sure you will forgive me for once. So General Charles Brown Jr., who is the Chief of Staff of the United States Air Force, in an interview a few days ago, declared that he has given mandate to produce a study, a new study, in which the mix of uh, the vehicles and planes for the Air Force is going to be revisited, reanalyzed, and the view is to make a proposal. And the core of the proposal is that the F-16, or most of the F-16 fleet, at least, should be replaced not with the F-35, but with the new fourth generation plus plus or five minus generation fighter. And this is big news, even if we are not sure it's going to happen and it will surely take quite a long time to happen. However, this is the first time that the United States Air Force was the main service behind the Joint Strike Fighter is disavowing the F-35 as the solution for this century. So what is the rationale behind General Brown's uh, announcement? Well, he actually mentioned a few reasons, to be honest. Apparently, there is no way to build enough F-35s to cope with the progressive aging of the fleet of F-16s. So if there's no replacement, it is quite likely that there will be a relatively large hole in the fleet of fighters of the United States Air Force in the near future. So one logical solution would be actually buying more F-16. I mean, the F-16 is still being built under the F-21 moniker. At the end of the day, the, the Air Force is actually buying about 100 F-15EX uh, just with the same justification. The fleet of the F-15s is becoming old and they actually need a replacement before they are replaced by anything else. However, always according to General Brown, the F-16 is pretty much at the end of its capability for improvement. So his preference and the hypothesis they are working on is to start as a clean slate to build a 4++ generation fighter. So the vision for the Air Force of the future is one with a high and low mix. Uh, 
with a high mix, uh, uh, with a high component of the mix made of F22 and F35. F22, the one that do exist today, and a few hundreds of F35. And then there will be a low mix, which will be composed mostly of this new um, 4 plus plus uh, fighter and uh, the F15 EX uh, and uh, the late models of the F15. As you can see, it's a radical departure of the policy that the Air Force maintained so far, where the F35 would have been pretty much the only plane in their inventory, the only combat plane in their inventory with some minimal complements here and there. The justification for this new mix, always according to General Brown, is that the fifth generation fighters, the fifth generation planes, are not always necessary. Uh, particularly in case like there is a low intensity conflict or even in a major conflict may be considered overkill even against a near peer opponent. We are talking Russia and China. To be clear, so how do we take this? Is this the omission that the F-35 has failed? Well, up to a point I would be tempted to say yes, it probably is. This is probably the admission that the F-35 was a program that was too complicated. It was a program that it was terribly expensive even if the unit cost for a single plane has gone down. Mind, I'm not saying that the F-35 is not a capable platform. It's the opposite. It is a very capable platform. It is at the top of the food chain now, and it will be for a few years, um, for sure. Uh, but a plane built like that has inherently two problems. And I'm not talking problems connected with costs, even if the cost of the program was astronomical, but it was basically building three different planes at the same time. So yeah, that's some sort of justified. And it's not connected with the cost of the single unit and the armament that is actually required to make the single unit effective. The cost of the single unit has gone down. Uh, the cost of the armament is not, but it has to be factoring that exists for uh, every plane. So it's not a factor. But there are two factors that the plane like the F-35 or the F-22 for what matters have to consider. First point is that both planes are very complex, which means that servicing and maintenance is complex and costly. And crucially, the level of availability of these planes may not reach the standard of other planes. The fact that the Air Force has decided to scrap the ALIS system and rebuild basically from scratch is yeah is a clear sign that there was a problem in that in that area the second element probably even more important is the fact that a weapon like the F35 or the F22 is probably too precious to be used because losing even one has long term consequences and mind, this is not often mentioned, but the day, the, basically the Russians and the Ch Chinese will be uh, completely capable to characterize the, the electronic footprint of the F-22 or the F-35, then it will become much easier to spot them. Stealth is going to be useful, but it's not going to be eternal. At some point it will become normal. 
It will become one of the many things that make uh, confronting a modern jet fighter a hard task. There's the whole world actually trying to beat stealth and the kind of electronic magic which has been included into the F-35. So we may expect that at some point the advantage will go away. At that point, this aura of invincibility that the plane has, and that is probably one of its most important assets, will go away. So from this point of view, it makes sense to have a high mix for the uh, missions against those targets that are very important. They were the risk of losing a stealth plane is justified and then having a lower tier of planes that maybe are not much cheaper but you can afford to lose. Okay, if we accept that this is what's going to happen then there are some considerations that we need to do and I still don't have the answers to the questions that I'm going to formulate now. So question number one, what's going to happen to the international partners? There are several international partners they are going to buy, at least the plan is, that they will be buying a significant fraction of all the F-35s being built. Uh, what are they going to do? Countries like Italy, Great Britain, Japan, Korea, they have sort of married the original idea around the F-35. So what they will do today? They will keep buying the F-35 or they will change tack and uh, go somewhere else? Well, for the European countries it would be quite easy. The Eurofighter, the um, Rafale and the Gripen are already there, just buy more. However, for other countries it may be more difficult and since the um, overall numbers of the F-35 will, will be greatly reduced, unit price for the, um, for the plane will go up and probably quite a lot. So will the international partners still be um, capable to afford those planes because something that they're buying is something that is not something that they're building so they will need to pay without cash. If I had to give you my impression I believe that the F-35B won't be particularly affected because basically there is no alternative. On the Queen Elizabeth carriers but even on the Italian carriers or other countries carriers you can just place the F-35B unless you want to build a completely new plane for a short takeoff and vertical landing, which is probably not easy and it's going to take quite a long time. Um, additionally, the Marines are in a hurry to replace their aging Hornets, so yeah, I believe that they will keep buying F-35Bs, whatever happens. Question number two, what about the US Navy? Yes, because if the price goes up, it goes up uh, also for the US Navy. And that's the least of the problem. The US Navy never loved the F-35C. They will probably end up with a limited number of squadrons of F-35s, maybe one will be part of the uh, carrier wing and they will be used as actually stealth planes should be used for risky missions uh, where to attack high value targets that cannot be attacked with any different weapon. Question number three. A few months ago Will Roper, who he is the person responsible for the procurement of the Air Force, declared that the United States has already flown a 
technology demonstrator of a sixth generation fighter. Now, the concept of the sixth generation fighter is to build a plane that is even more complex and more advanced than the F-35. So we are wondering what would be the role of the sixth generation fighter in an air force that is going to have this high low mix. Will it slowly replace the high mix? Possible. Now it's difficult to understand what could be the rationale in the sense if the F-35 is already overkill for some missions, then a sixth generation fighter will definitely be absolutely overkill. Question number four. This uh, 4 plus plus new fighter that is expected to replace the F-16 is expected to be a simpler, cheaper, maybe using uh, built using off-the-shelf components, and they should be relatively quick to design, but still I can't believe it could be in service before 10 years. And this would be probably even rushing the project. And it would be quite difficult to convince the American defense contractor to build something simple and cheap. I remind you, the Joint Strike Fighter had to be a cheap, simple, light in the same way and it went full circle in being on the other side. What guarantees that even this new plane is not going to end up on the other side of the spectrum? Yeah, this is a problem that the Air Force will need to consider. Okay, it is clear that this was just a working proposition. It was just an idea that was thrown out in the wild to see what their reaction were going to be. It's, um, we are not sure that it's going to happen, but if the Chief of Staff of the Air, uh, of the Air Force does that, is definitely more than just an idea, okay? There are probably, there is probably something behind that support in that there's probably a mechanism of power that is going to support it. I believe that the US Air Force, in this case, could be wise and uh, do something that the US Navy has recently already done. Now, I know that I'm asking the Air Force to take the Navy as a model, which is a very long shot, but the Navy, when they realized that they screwed up and they needed new frigates, just went out on the market and bought a design that was already working. And to do that, they went to the other side of the pond, buying the Fram frigates. Dear United States Air Force, look at the other side of the pond, but there are already four plus plus generation fighters flying very effectively and perfectly interoperable with your forces. Just have a think. So thank you very much for watching this makeshift video. And if you like this video, unlikely, but if you like this video, you are going to like the videos that are going to appear beside me. And meanwhile, please like, dislike, subscribe and hit the bell so you won't miss anything. And if you could support the channel on Patreon or subscribe star, uh, yes, it will be a win-win situation for, for us. In the meanwhile, thank you very, very, very much for watching. Uh, you have no idea how much I appreciate that. Um, please stay safe and see you next time.